Today's Take 5 with the Saints, May the 6th, is a truly fascinating figure, Saint Isadora of Tabena. We don't know a whole lot about her. She was a 4th century monastic who lived out in some of the first communal monasteries in Egypt. Back a few months ago, we looked at some of the early desert mothers and fathers who often lived by themselves out in the midst of of the harsh wilderness. Isidora came to the monastery at Tibena, which was one of the first ones that was established in community among those living out in the desert. And what we know about her comes from her life in that monastery at Tibena. And as you'll see, she is someone who, um, let's just say, is an interesting character and yet one who lives up to her title that is given to her in her canonization by both the Roman Catholic and the Orthodox churches a true fool for Christ. She's a local commemoration, so we don't have a scripture that goes with her feast day, so I'll just jump right in. We think she was born around the year 300, but that's very speculative in of itself, but that at a very young age, she found herself wandering into the monastery at Tabena, which is a few miles east of Nag Hammani in Upper Egypt. When she arrived at the monastery, there were about 400 women who lived and worked there, all of whom were dedicated to the monastic life. During her whole time when she lived, for however many years that was that she lived in the monastery, she was considered an outsider. Now again, because it was so long ago and we have very scant biographical details even for that time period, we have to sort of put some of the dots here together. What we do know is that many, if not all, of the sisters in the monastery looked at her as a mad woman. They would call her um, sale, which was a way of expressing that somebody is just not quite all there. They would mistreat her because of that. In fact, it was reputed that Isidora uh, that nobody ever saw her sit down and have an actual meal. She preferred to not eat in the community, and when they did see her eat, it was usually when she was cleaning up the crumbs from the table and helping to remove all the plates and dishes. She would be seen eating the crumbs of what was left over from the meal. She would not object. In fact, she sought out every menial task. And while... Many of the nuns in the monastery had tonsures or coverings like you see habits now with nuns today. They didn't have habits, but a headdress that would essentially recognize the vows they had taken as monastics. She was known as Sidoro to wear a dish towel on her head, which subjected her to increasing ridicule and disgust from her sisters, who considered her, in fact, to be literally insane or demon-possessed. It was believed, though, that this was all an affront because Isadora, according to what little information we have, believed that she was called to live as a fool for Christ, that what others thought of her meant nothing. It was what God thought of her and that, to some extent, she was feigning this madness to alienate herself so as a part of her spiritual discipline to seek that sort of harsh treatment so that she might grow in her own inner devotion towards God. So in many ways, she was like the original des desert mothers who sought that isolation and who sought to have that one-on-one -on -one relationship with God and community, and yet she recognized for her the ironic importance of a community was to help remind her that she did not seek that type of fame and attention. But she was known, despite the mistreatment she received, as someone who never insulted or grumbled at the women who treated her so poorly. She was never raised up to retaliate, even though, according to her biography, she was cuffed and insulted and cursed and execrated. There was an important event, though, in her life that really shaped what became the cult of Isidora that was that shaped both the desert monastics and a lot of monastics in the Middle East going forward, particularly women who sought to join convents. There was a particularly well-known anchorite, a monk who lived by himself, named Saint P uh, Pitorum. I always mispronounce the name, better, easy, more easily pronounced as Pitorum, 
who was praying one day and had, according to this account, an angel of the Lord said to him, Why are you proud of yourself for being religious and dwelling in a place like this, being by himself in a cave in the desert? Do you want to see a woman who is more religious than you? Go to the monastery of the Tebanese women, and there you will find a woman wearing a crown on her head. She is better than you. For though she spars with so great a crowd, she has never let her heart go away from God. Well, he received permission from the confederation of anchorites who lived around him to travel to this monastery. He assembled the sisters and wanted to see them all one by one. In many ways, it's very familiar to the story of when the prophet Samuel was trying to discover David or who God had called him to anoint as king of Israel. But Petirim looks at each one and did not see the one. And he says, are these all of the sisters? And they said, well, there's the crazy one that's back in the kitchen. So she said, call her, or he said, call her and bring her out. She would not come. So eventually Petirim himself had to go and fetch her. And when he saw her and recognized the dish towel on her head, he saw this as the crown that had been revealed to her or to him. He bowed at her feet and asked her to bless him. She immediately fell before him in a like manner and asked, Do you bless me, Master? The other sisters, as you would imagine, were shocked by this behavior and said to him, Father, do not let her insult you. She is sale. Again, insane. Petirim quickly replied to all of them by saying, You are indeed sale. For she is mother, both of me and you, and I pray to be found worthy of her in the day of judgment. From that moment on, all of the nuns treated her with great respect and dignity. And according to the story, she became so uncomfortable with this that she left the monastery at Tabena, and that's really where... We, her story drops off. We don't know what happened to her. Think she died a few years after that, but again, that's, there's really no documentation that supports that. What we have about Isidore is a lot of legend mixed in with some facts that we know, but what has become part of her story is the fact that her life was one truly lived as being a fool for Christ. She did not seek blessing from anyone but God and God alone. Her behavior was such to draw enmity toward herself. But again, as I said earlier, the belief was that she did this in order to sharpen her own devotion to God. Well, her faithfulness and her ability to focus on God and God alone has become an inspiration for generations of monks and nuns, even down to this day, who hold St. Isidore of Tabena as highest regard as one who completely gave her life, her soul, and her heart to the glory and service of her Master Jesus Christ. Thanks for joining me. Look forward to being with you again tomorrow. Take care.